my name is Ozzy and um, I'm 22 years old. I'm, I'm from Nigeria originally. I'll just give a short testimony about how the Lord, how I, how the Lord found me and saved, my, saved me. I'll say my household was kind of like a Christian home, but no one really told me who Jesus was. So I just went along saying I was a Christian, like what happens is in many Nigeria home. But um, so I just, when I was young, I got to like hang out with like, when I was kind of like um, eight, nine, ten, like, I don't know, like I always had like a conviction there was a God, like, I guess in Romans, that's what it says, like everyone knows there was a God. So I tried to do many good things even when I was little, but I just didn't have any peace. Like I knew I was wicked right from when I was little. And um, I got to go to like a boarding house. My parents sent me away to a boarding house. And I think that's when I just, my heart just grew darker. Like. Um, at the age of 12, 13, I started like um, drinking, like um, smoking marijuana, just hanging out with the wrong people. And um, I joined like um, what, what I call like a gang, but, and it was just, that really just hardened my heart to sin because I just, I was just a wicked person. Like I was a big bully in my school. And um, I can remember we used to have like a slogan in my school and the slogan was like, forgiveness is a sin and that's what was just in my heart like um, if someone did something to me I hardly forgave them because I was just wicked I hated um, my mom my dad but I really loved my brother that was one thing I really did but um, from there like I was just really bad um, that time I did loads of stuff like my parents were not proud of me and um, I was just horrible in my school work and everything everything I did in life just turned up badly um, and I can remember like um, <laughs> When I was young, then um, I was meant to come straight to England to study, but my dad wouldn't let me to come. He said I should do one more year in Nigeria because he thought if he just let me go, I'll be in a terrible state. And I was really angry then, like I really was just angry about life. But I just, I just look at it now like it's the sovereignty of God. Because I can remember one day I was walking past, like um, I was meant to travel to another place in Nigeria. And I saw a book. Um, a guy actually wrote a book, he, he wrote a book, he, talk, um, he used like um, Proverbs 23, it says, as a man thinketh, so is he, so he is, um, and I kind of, that was the first book I ever read in my life, and I don't know how biblical it was then, but I just knew I was foolish as a man, I knew I had to change my ways, and I kind of tried to do um, loads of religious stuff, but I don't know, there was no peace in me until I came to England. I came to England and I forgot about all those things and I just carried on doing my way. I went to a Catholic boarding school and I tried to do many good things. I, I, like, um, I was even one of the people who used to give out the com like what they call Holy Communions there. I got baptized in the Catholic church and I kept on doing many things, but I was still wicked. I was still doing my drugs and drinking, part, like hanging out with girls and one of the things that really shocked me was um, I came over to Manchester to visit a friend, like a friend back from Nigeria, Fred, who actually attends the same church as, as I do. And we grew up in the same place in Nigeria, went to the same school. And when I came to see him, the first time I came, he was still living his life in sin and we enjoyed ourselves. And, um, and so the next time I came back to Manchester to visit him and um, I can remember we went out, we went out to, um, a night before and we had we had some drinks we were hungover and he woke up in the morning telling me he wanted to go to church and I was just really shocked saying what, what are you doing why, why would you go to church what are you doing on a Sunday and I went to church that day and um, I, I think it was more like a charismatic church and everything like people were just screaming now I know it was not biblical but and I don't know what the pastor preached but I kind of just like that kind of also convicted me but I just carried on in my own way. But the thing is that one thing that Fred gave me, he actually bought a Bible for me. And through then I started reading the Bible and I only used to read Proverbs. Then um, he encouraged me to read the New Testament. I started reading the Gospels and I kind of was really shocked the kind of things I was seeing about Jesus and his claims saying he was God because no one told me that before. So I'd, because of that, because of Fred, I actually moved over to Manchester to do my university. And I just look at the way I came to Manchester and it was just like a miracle because I got rejected the first time I applied here. But 
I actually prayed, <laughs> then I was lost and I prayed. I said, Lord, like, I didn't even know what I was saying. I said, please help me to get to Manchester and I will serve you. Like, just said that as a prayer. And um, the school wrote back to me telling me, like, I could come over to do my university degree. And I was just excited. But as like a lost man, I came to Manchester. I forgot what I told God and just carried on my lifestyle. And it's kind of like in the first year, I attended a church and um, I attended the church, which was just an unbiblical church because um, everyone seemed like they never sinned and I thought I was the only hypocrite in there and I tried to do everything. I tried to obey the commandments and try to, but I just see I could not just catch up with the, the people who claimed to be Christians there and Fred, my friend, he started reading the Bible and taking the things seriously and he would tell me things. I'll be like, man, you need to calm down because I thought it was getting radical. And he told me one thing, one day, he said, look, this Bible is like, it's serious. And he told me he didn't know he, whether he was saved. And that really struck me. I said, if he wasn't saved, then what am I? And I thought like, wow, if, if this guy, because I was even hiding some things I used to do from him, like I'll carry on like going to, he stopped doing like um, smoking drugs. And I, I used to still do it behind his back and still go to church. And um, I was just a hypocrite and so many things into sexual, just so many horrible things. And he just told me he wasn't saved. That was a big shock to me. And by God's grace, I think he met Kevin Williams, uh, the pastor of Grace Fellowship. And he met him in town and he just started um, coming to the church. And he just told me, he just started taking the Bible seriously. And he was just telling me about Christ, about, and I don't really know. I think he got converted. Um, then he invited me to the church. And one thing I came, I came into the church, like um, one thing that really struck me when I came into like a biblical church was everyone, like after the sermon in my former church, like I would just want to talk about football and everyone was fine with it. But when I came here, like <laughs> everyone was just talking about Jesus Christ, opening their Bibles and just glorying in Christ. And that really struck me that and just everything. I just, I could not just, be, I was not comfortable here because I was just a sinner and I could just see people really excited about Christ and talking about his name. And that kind of challenged me, that kind of wanted me to check the scriptures and see who Christ was. And when I came here, Ke Kevin was preaching on the songs of um, Solomon and just talking how Christ truly loved his believer and how he's done everything. And the first time I heard the true gospel, I thought, wow, man, I've never heard anything. Like I said, wow, there must be a catch behind this. I said, how can all we just do is to believe in Christ? I thought because where I went around, people were telling me, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to take care of yourself. And I was just, that time I was in a miserable time for six months because I would talk to Kevin. I would say, Kevin, what can I do? I was just convicted of my sins. I did not want to do the, like, the things I was doing before. I did not want to hang out, just hanging out with my friends and seeing the things they used to talk about was just, to me, I didn't want to live that life. I can remember going into a nightclub once and the music there and everything, I just, I ran out from there. I was just convicted about everything and I was literally whipping on the, on the road. I said, Lord, I want to change. I want to like save me. I, I was still looking for something to do. And I talked to Kevin, Kevin just said, look, you just need to repent, turn away from your sins that Christ has paid it all. And he just it was graceful for me and just showing me scriptures, showed me John 19, 30 where I said um, Christ has done everything and he said it is finished that you just need to trust in him I said wow man that it can't just be so easy like I listen to sermons Paul Washer um, sermons and they will say the same things but I was just looking for something to do and I was just in a miserable state because one day I'll think oh I'm saved because I got free from some sin I was looking to my performance and not Christ and I kept on just praying like nights I was not able to sleep properly and um, I came one time and um, the day Zoe gave her testimony and she just I don't know I was sat at the front when Zoe gave her testimony and I was just praying that time I said Lord please just save me I want to trust in you I don't want this life and Zoe just gave her testimony and it was, she was, it was just like she was talking to me I think the Lord just opened my heart then and she just told her life how she was a hypocrite before and how she just looked to Christ and um, she gave one um, verse, Romans 10, 13, who says, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Like, if you truly call upon the Lord. 
I just saw the scripture, it said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that night I went to bed crying over that scripture. I said, Lord, your word says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I said, Lord, I don't know if you're true. I don't know if you're real. I said, but your word says this. I said, Lord, you've got to save me. I just went home that day and just, I said, Lord, this is, it says this in your word. Uh, I just said, I'm taking your promise. And it kind of like just clicked. And I said, look, I'm just going to try. Where else can I go to? And I think I, I just understood the gospel. Like Christ is all about Christ. I don't need to look to myself that he's paid it all. And I just thank God from there on like the Lord has just been showing me things. And I, the, the thing about when I got saved, the first book I really got to read was the gospel of John. And that kind of just blew my mind of who Christ is and how much he's worth. And since then, the Lord has just been helping me more and more to understand who he is. And mm. that's why I need the gospel every day. So that's a bit short testimony. I just want to encourage anyone, if you've not trusted in Christ, is all we need in this world. And we just need to repent and trust in him. Like he's paid it all for sinners. Mm.